This is the police. Open up the door. We want to talk to you. Uh-oh. What are you supposed to do if you get that knock on the door? Or maybe it's not even a knock on the door. Maybe you get a letter in the mail from the police and they want you to come in. Or a phone call and they say, hey, why don't you come on down to the station? We need to talk. Well, guess what? You are the subject of an investigation. And so I'm going to tell you right now what you need to do and more importantly, what you should not do if you are the subject of a police investigation. Hi, I'm attorney Derek Martin and our law firm driver defense team uh, handles a lot of criminal cases, DUIs, uh, traffic incidents, things like that here in the Chicagoland area. So we quite often uh, are, are working with clients who are the subject of an investigation. Now, there are a few different um, forms of communication that this can take. So the one I showed you was obviously a knock on the door. Um, that's the one that people think about, right? But you might also just get a phone call that says, hey, I want to talk to you about so-and-so, come on in. Or maybe they don't even want you to come in. Maybe the officer just wants to talk to you on the phone. They say, hey, you got a few minutes of your time. I just want to make sure everything's good. And they're going to ask you some questions. Uh, another way is just a letter in the mail. For example, in Chicago, if you are in a car accident and or at least alleged to have been in a car accident and left that scene, maybe uh, bumped a car in the parking lot or you know hit somebody in there at an intersection for whatever reason they think that you left and fled, uh, most of the time, unless there's really serious injuries or other circumstances, most of the time you're just going to get a letter in the mail from Chicago Police Department uh, saying, hey, come on in, we need to talk to you. So either way, in any of those scenarios, no matter how they reached out to you, uh, they are trying to communicate with you and you are almost certainly the subject of an investigation. Now, this investigation can take a few different forms, right? Not only in how they contact you, but sort of the level or the intensity of this investigation can vary. So, you know, obviously just getting a letter uh, or even just a phone call and saying, hey, come on in, we want to chat, it is a, a lower form uh, of investigation. Um, but they can also knock on your door and make an arrest, right? Um, hey, you're coming, you're being processed and charged with something. Well, that's the conclusion of the investigation, right? They've already have the, enough or they believe they have enough to charge you. Uh, another way is a knock on the door and they execute a search warrant. Maybe they don't even knock on the door uh, and they execute a search warrant. Now that's obviously quite serious. They've already had a judge sign off on a search warrant. You're probably all familiar with this. Um, but the real subject of this, so in that scenario where, where they're executing a search warrant, there's nothing you can do about that. In fact, there's nothing you should do about that. You sit there quietly, you don't make any statements, and, and, and that's it, right? You can't stop them from executing that search warrant. So what we're really talking about today is sort of an ongoing investigation where they do just want to talk. They want to understand your side of the story, or more accurately, they, they want you to incriminate yourself by telling your side of the story. So what happens then? Whether this takes place in the form of a letter, a phone call, or a knock on the door, what should you do? Well, the way I see it is that you have four options. Option number one, you can talk. You can tell them everything you know. Now, that's not what I'm recommending here, to be clear. That I do not suggest that, but that is an option, and unfortunately, that's what many people do. Let's talk about why that's probably not a good idea. You may have heard this thing that says anything you say or do can be used against you in the court of law, right? Uh, and so that's true, very, very true, that anything you say at that point can be used against you and you are probably not going to outsmart them. They already have some information, whether that be eyewitness testimony, a video these days, it seems like everything is caught on video these days, uh, other sort of reports or physical evidence that um, you know leads them to you, you are probably not going to talk your way out of criminal charges. So don't talk. That's the solution. Um, don't, tell, don't tell the whole story. Don't make up a story. Simply don't talk, right? And so what you would say is, 
I'm not going to make any statements or I'm not going to make any statements without my attorney being present. And that is the best advice that I can give you. If you take nothing away from this video, take down the statement. I am not going to make any statements. That's it. I am not going to make any statements. That's what you should do if confronted with this situation. So do not talk. Option number one is to speak with the police. Do not do that. Option number two is to ignore them. That uh, is a viable option. Now, let, let's, let's dive into ignoring the police when you are the subject of an investigation. Well, one thing this accomplishes is you're not making statements, right? You're not incriminating yourself. You're not helping their investigation, uh, which is a good thing for you. You do have the right, uh, the better way to say it is you do not have any obligation to speak with the police. You don't even have an obligation to open the door, or answer the phone for the police. You are under absolutely no obligation to do that. Ignoring them does have some risks though, right? They will typically or can escalate the investigation and that could lead to a warrant, right? That could lead them to, to you know, even make an arrest, right? If they have enough information to charge you. So ignoring is not, is not foolproof, um, but it is better than simply talking to the police and telling your story uh, if you are the subject of uh, an investigation because make no mistake about it, their goal is to get enough information to arrest you. The third option would be to comply, but be quiet. Not a bad option either. You can see we're getting better and better options here. First was talk to them, bad idea. Second was to um, ignore them, better, right? Third, Maybe, especially if you don't want them coming to your house and your work and, and following you around and essentially harassing you, uh, um, option may be to go into the police station, comply, but do not say anything. You can give them your name um, and maybe an ID, but you are not going to make any statements whatsoever uh, as to you know their investigation. You can simply say, what is it? I'm not going to make any statements, or I'm not going to make any statements without my attorney being present. That's the better way. That's a hard thing to do, though. Uh, many people will, based on experience, many people will succumb to the pressure, right? They literally do put you in a small room that you can't see out of. Wind with no windows and one guy, one officer comes in or two officers come in and they grill you under a, a, a bright light. I mean, that is essentially what it's like. And so many people succumb to the pressure and you may start off saying, I'm not making any statements, but these are trained investigators, right? And so they uh, are probably, uh, they're definitely going to employ some te techniques and they are probably going to get you to talk. So that's why I cannot, in good faith, recommend that you go handle this yourself. The fourth option is to hire an attorney. We have many cases, many ongoing cases, many ongoing investigations right now where we, have, uh, represent, we are representing that person. And so what we do is we insert ourselves into that investigation. Depending on the circumstances, all cases are different, but many times we will reach out to that detective or, or investigator uh, on your behalf. We will speak with them. We will let them know that you are represented by counsel. We will let them know that you will not be making any statements without us being present. We can usually learn a lot more information about potential charges, about what evidence they may have and what direction they want to go with this investigation. We're going to learn a lot more about those things than, than you would on your own. That's just a fact, right? And so it is a good idea if you are in this situation to consult with and likely hire an attorney to help walk you through this investigative process. Uh, this could be the difference between being charged with a criminal offense and not. Uh, I tell people who, who you know maybe are hesitant to spend money on an attorney at this point, uh, I tell you that this may be the best money you've ever spent, right? If it can avoid a criminal charge, which sometimes does happen, I give tons of examples of that, uh, then this would be the best money you ever spent, right? You may avoid a felony or a misdemeanor charge. So that is uh, the sort of 
we've talked about the different ways that they can contact you, right? We've talked about sort of the different levels of intensity uh, when an officer and investigator contacts you. And then we talked about your four options. Um, and we went through sort of what the recommendation is, uh, general recommendation. I don't know about your specific situation, but what the general recommendation may be uh, on, uh, on a situation like that. So if you have questions about that and are in the Chicagoland area, we can help. If not, then just contact some, a criminal defense attorney near you. I promise you all good criminal defense attorneys are very familiar with this. Um, and so you need some counsel at this point. And I hope that you at least found this video helpful. It lets you lay out your options and hopefully pointed you in the right direction because this is a very critical point in time. Thank you for watching.